Hi there, right, okay, let me just show you what we're using today, because this is Lightroom, but it's the mobile version, yet we're on desktop, because that can happen. <laughs> so people do get a little bit confused about kind of all the different variations of Lightroom, and ultimately there's only two. Okay, so they've got Lightroom Classic, which is probably the one that most people know and love, especially for most of your photo editing, um, you've seen kind of tutorials from us, it's the one that we use kind of primarily, uh, kind of most of the time. But this is the alternative version that you can get as an app, so you can have this potentially for your phone, you can have it for your tablet, your iPad, whatever, but you can also get it on your desktop. And the reason being is that then you can kind of put any images obviously onto a larger screen here and you can sync it and then you can actually also use it then on your phone, on your tablet, etc. And I just wanted to go through like the interface and the layout and how it works a little bit because it is slightly different from the classic look. A lot of the tools, etc., are very, very similar, but the interface, etc., here is a little bit different. It'll obviously be kind of somewhat similar to how your tablet is and how it is on your phone, but obviously just because the retail space is a little bit smaller in those instances, you know, there'll, there'll be compromises. So let's just kind of, for argument's sake, let's just bring an image in here to begin with so we've got something kind of shown up on screen. Now, the main thing that you'll find different in this panel on the left-hand side, you don't normally get that in Lightroom Classic, um, but in Lightroom CC, like this mobile version as we call it, um, you've got two tabs to begin with. You've got cloud and local. Now the cloud is effectively all your images that are stored digitally in the cloud, which then can be accessed from the desktop version. So you could have it on your PC or your laptop. Then you can also have those same images with the same edits. Basically, you know, wherever you're editing up to, you just leave it there. And then when you come over to your tablet, your iPad, etc., you open it up, then they'll sync them across. As long as you've, you've got the sync turned on and as well as making sure you have the um, the, the Adobe subscription because you can download um, the um, Lightroom app onto your tablet and have it on your phone, but there are limits in terms of the features until you've got a subscription. Like you can't use raw files, um, you know, a lot of the, the extra kind of like denoises and a few other bits and pieces, you won't be able to use either. So you are kind of somewhat limited a little bit. Once you've got the subscription, it's no holes barred. You can kind of basically sync all your images across all your devices. And this is how you would access them, um, or at least on the desktop version here anyway. And it all no doubt be very, very similar uh, on the tablet. Now it may differ a little bit from like the Android version to the iPad the iPad version and same again on the phones but you will have kind of two categories that basically to access images on the cloud and uh, now there, there is a local one here as well so this is for images that are stored onto your hard drive so as I'm on the desktop here this will be anything stored locally normally like on your on your C drive as we would call it and um, so obviously these images wouldn't be unless we're kind of putting them up into the cloud we're syncing them across they won't be accessible on your other devices so that's probably kind of the main thing that is a little bit different between the two you do also have a few of the little tabs here that you can kind of follow other artists uh, and other kind of creators to basically kind of see the styles of work they've got sometimes any of their edits and the, the kind of presets etc they put within like a kind of a community area where you can then also kind of uh, you know basically take some of the presets and some of the the ideas and kind of connect from them from in, from there and put them onto your own work etc. And um, then you will also have I've, all your images that are stored on your cloud as well that you can break them down as to kind of the dates that you shot them by pictures of people if it can recognize faces etc all those different things as well as having kind of albums which you can store and categorize your images in all very very kind of logical kind of simple things from there so that's one of the main things on the right oh, sorry on the left side of the screen um, that is different from Lightroom classic if we go over to the other side again now you'll start to see a lot of this be quite familiar now the order of the icons generally they try to kind of keep similar so whether it's on desktop and tablet etc so they all work in a very very similar sense. At the first top one here, uh, you'll have the presets. So any kind of presets, again, they can be synced across as well. So if you've got presets that you can use quite a lot, all your basic ones will be there as well. But if you've got any presets that you can use on your tablet and you've created there, once they're all kind of basically put onto the app itself, it will then sync across so you can then straight away have the same presets on your phone, on your desktop, etc. So it means you don't actually have to end up transferring files through USBs, etc. All things like that. So you've got your presets all there. Then you've got your normal kind of editing um, kind of panels etc again all very very similar to how it is in classic you've got your lights your color uh, your color mixture your gradings all your effects and details from there then you've got your cropping tool 
Now this is a little bit different from how it is in Lightroom Classic. Um, you don't have all the kind of the the kind of transformational tools done in the same way. They're normally kind of put down a little bit lower, but instead they're putting a, like another little drop down here under Geometry, where you can change to all the same tools again. You've got the guided, the auto, the level, the vertical, the full, all the different perspective transformations. So they're just laid out a little bit differently. The one thing I think I find with Lightroom um, CC is that it's it's much more simplified. It is just really designed as an App. There's just lots of kind of single clickings and drop downs, um, made to be a lot cleaner and a lot clearer. Now, I think that works quite nicely for apps and it's a bit more intuitive because you touch things, etc. When it gets the desktop version, I think sometimes you'd like to have a little bit more choice and you could they can use the space up a little bit more here. But I appreciate I'm in a large screen, you know, some people could be using this on a smaller like laptop screen that's like only 15 inches. So it's a little bit different really. So it's designed for, for everybody, but there's sometimes maybe certain times that it's a little bit better in other devices, etc. You get what I mean. So otherwise, all your cropping options are there. You've got your one-to-ones, your two-to-ones, all the different ratios for types of crops that you want. Obviously, you could kind of just make it make it up as you go if you wanted to, just by moving the, the crop markers wherever you wanted to go. And then obviously, you can start to rotate the image, etc., if needs be. But I'm not going to kind of play with that right now. This is more just walking you through the interface. Then you've got your remove tool, okay? So you may get some tool tips that pop up. From here, just kind of describing a little bit what each of the tools do. Let's just get rid of some of these because we know what they do already, but I'm just going to tell you again. So you've got your remove option here where you can change the size of the brush if you want to take some things out. So you can see I've got a few little dust spots in the corner there. So I can make it bigger and smaller just to make it easier to get rid of those little parts. So very, very simple. I can just kind of press it on there. And then it's got a couple of options, which I could turn off actually, and it probably wouldn't have to go through a lot of this AI bits and pieces. I think it's best and use things like the generative, the generative AI when you are removing kind of bigger objects, the things that are a little bit more clunky or take up a bit more space um, in the overall shot. For little things like dust spots, little marks on the screens, etc., it takes like a bit of time to do that, and I didn't really need to do it, you know, to that degree. If I get rid of it and I put it back, and I actually turn these options off, so this generative AI, let's turn that off and show the overlay on hover. I don't need that. I'm just going to turn all those off and I'm just going to press it up there. It's gone. That's saving me time. So that generative AI detect objects, really, really helpful, but it's not all, it does slow you down. It does slow you down. And I think it's very, very useful depending upon the type of thing you're trying to remove, etc. So I'm just going to do it again because there's a little mark down the side of our shot here. I think something kind of creeping into the side of the image. Yeah, it's not brilliant, that one, actually. Let's just try it again. Make it a bit smaller. Let's get the brush head over it again. It's done a not too bad a job there. I may have to include that cloud, if it, possibly if it's looking at the cloud and using parts of that to fill it up with a may just maybe a bit more well, actually it's not doing a good job at all there I do tend to find it it's a little bit funny when it gets to the edges if you've cropped your image then sometimes it's looking at what was outside the crop before so I'll tell you what let's actually use the generative ai and the detect objects let's just try and kind of see if we can clean this up a little bit more on this side so it's just kind of confirming that's the area that we want to remove that's absolutely fine it's got a little bit more of the blue sky in there but it's not going to make any difference but yeah there's these are the remove tools so you've got the remove you'll also have the heal um i've forgotten what the other ones are in there but once this ai little pop-up window disappears and we have a nice background We'll actually have a look at a couple of the others. But again, if you've used Lightroom before, it, well, even with this classic version, all these options will be very similar. They're just sometimes laid out a little bit differently, so it's important to know where those things are. Okay, it's given us a nice little new cloud. The second variation hasn't, and the third variation hasn't, so I just choose a different one. So anyway, that's looking at our remove. Then we've got our heel tool, which work in a very similar fashion, and the clone, and then the red eye. I don't even know if red eye is any relevant anymore. <laughs> but anyway, I haven't got a portrait um, kind of a shot here to really kind of make that worthwhile. But anyway, we know how those work. So it's just looking at the layout of it to begin with. Then we've got the masking tool. So all the kind of masking tools that are available here, the normal subject sky uh, background. We've got the new landscape one, the objects one, brush, linear gradient, etc. We've got classes on these separately. 
So even if you're using Lightroom CC, I've got classes that I've done where I've covered all of these before in Lightroom Classic, but they will work in the exact same way. So if you want to know how all these individual elements work, so by all means go and kind of check those out on iPhotography. Um, and as with the whole piece of software itself, I know I'm kind of going through this very briefly in terms of just giving you an outline as to roughly how it works, etc., on desktop. Um, but our Edit with Apps course is absolutely fantastic. Emily Lowry will give you a brilliant kind of uh, explanation as to a lot of the main apps that photographers can use for things like iPads, you know, even tabloid, uh, tabloid, Android tablets. It's a combination of the two um, apps on there as well. And one of them is Lightroom CC Mo uh, yeah, like yeah, it's Lightroom CC Mobile is what they call it, isn't it? Um, so you can get a full working experience as to how it goes. This is just like a bit of a brief overview to kind of give you a bit of an introduction to the interface itself. But if you want to know as to how all the tools actually work, please go and check out the course because it's absolutely fantastic. Um, so that's the kind of the main tools that you've got down the side there. You've got your syncing option at the top here. So make sure this is turned on and if you want to obviously sync images from your desktop to your tablet or vice versa, making sure you've got that, but you will need an Adobe subscription to do that for you. Now you can pause it because obviously it can, takes up a little bit of dating usage and it takes up a little bit of time. It can slow the app down. Um, so if you're working quite a lot on images, it's best to do all your edits first and then maybe turn your sync on. So then it can kind of obviously sync across to all your other devices and it will just not slow you down from there. You've got your export button at the top here as well. And this is very, very similar on the app. I've got a Samsung app, which I use uh, Lightroom on as well. So I know it works in a very, very similar fashion that you can actually customize exactly what you want in terms of the parameters for your export. You can change different file types. JPEG is fantastic. It's very, very universal, especially if your image is going to potentially just end up online. Um, the dimensions of it you can keep it exactly kind of how it was full size we can make it to the standardized small set um, or we can kind of customize it in terms of how how long the actual dimensions of the image are then you've got the option of the watermark which you can turn on and off from there but you can customize it as well and um, you've got a little option at the side here so you can either keep it as just text or if you want to have a graphic if you've actually got a logo of your own you can go and get from your desktop or whatever kind of hard drive you're using on your uh, computer, etc. You can also pick out the position as to where your um where watermark goes, whether you want it in the top corner, want it in the middle, etc. You can move that around so it just as you see, see it moves into the right different position. You can change the fonts of them, the styles of them, etc. Do whatever you wish in respect to the size. So that's just another little thing. Because I do, you know, photographers do like to kind of protect their work, and I appreciate in this day and age of kind of the internet and you know images being digitized. It's very easy to remove a watermark, especially with like generative AIs and all those bits and pieces. But sometimes people just like to have that kind of comfort and that reassurance that at least they've put their stamp on things, even if someone was to be kind of a little bit naughty and well, very, very naughty and take it off. Um, but either way, so that's how you add a watermark to it from there. You've got the option of keeping your metadata into the uh, how you name your file, the output sharpening, etc. If you want to increase that or decrease it, uh, the color space as well, depending on where it's going from there and then you can just hit export and obviously take your image off to wherever it's going from there. So yeah, that's kind of the main panel um, on the right hand side. We've looked at the left hand side. At the bottom you will have effectively kind of a little film strip here with all your images that you've got based upon the same folder. So if you've just dragged an image in from somewhere as I have before. Um, I've got all the other images down here that are actually in the same folder. We can change the view of them. If you want to go to a more of a, a library layout, we can do. We can have a look at lots of different ones there. If we want to compare images, etc., we can do that. We will get tool tips that no doubt pop up every now and again from there. You can things like that. It's always kind of useful because sometimes some um, updates go on in Lightroom and you may not always be aware of it. So sometimes a new feature has come in or something's been moved or something works a little a bit differently so it does it's not too bad an idea to kind of just if you get the opportunity to read them it's very very helpful um so again again if you've used Lightroom before you can tag your shots you can rate them so if you want to then create a set of five star images and then we can just narrow those down so say for example let's just kind of pick out like that one that call that one a five star then this one here oh can be a four star maybe let's rate that one four then that one five okay 
And then what we're going to do, just close off that little tool tab there. Um, let's just move away from that. So you can do it from this way as well down there. So if you want to kind of set your images and just view certain ones based upon uh, certain parameters, then you can do. Then I'm just going to rate a few more images along here. So even though some of them I think are a little bit better than potentially three stars, this is just for the purposes of showing you of how they look and how they're arranged. We've got a little drop down menu at the side. You can see down in the bottom corner. Now, again, this may be positioned a bit differently on the apps, but this is just the desktop I'm talking about. Um, so we can change the order and how we actually see the images based upon the star rating. So you can see now they go from our five stars down to our fours, down to our threes, down to our ones from there. If you want to go the opposite, opposite way we can do so we just get anything that's unrated then we go one three four five etc so if you just want to be able to grade your images and just work on the ones initially that you think are your best and then if you've got a bit of time you can work on your four stars etc it's just a quicker way of going through them bit by bit if you like to do a bit of a kind of a, a bulk edit etc things like that and obviously you can change it back to the file names or based upon um, the actual date that you imported them or the capture date etc lots of different things if you want to get rid of this if you want to just hide the film strip you can do you've also got a comparison option so if you do do a bit of an edit uh, then you can actually kind of see your original you can see where you're up to so say for example let's just kind of do a bit of a brightness here change that etc you can kind of always flip back just by flicking this forwards on and off you can just see your original you can kind of check as to where you're up to at the same time so it just gives you a little bit of a before and after makes it nice and quick and easy and the last little area I just wanted to show you was the menu bar at the top. Again, a lot of these things will be very, very familiar for you, but um, you've got the option again from exporting, so you don't have to just do it through the icons. Some of the other bits and pieces that I have been talking about are possible to access through some of this menu bar at the top. So you've got your export, um, you can bring it into Photoshop. So if you're on your desktop and you have actually got Lightroom and you've got Photoshop and you want to do a little bit more advanced editing, you can kind of bring your image across into there uh, and do some further editing from there. You can do it into other pieces of software as well anything that is kind of compatible um, you've got your normal selection for your edits you've got your options to be able to rate your images um, through the star system but doing it through the menus I find it's a little bit easy to actually do it down the bottom there because otherwise you're having to kind of go down to the bottom then come up to the here and rate but you will see there are some shortcuts so if you wanted to actually add um, a star rating just based upon your keyboard you can do it just by simply press the numbers zero to five um, from there and again a few other bits and pieces just for kind of all housekeeping etc you've got your conversions to black and white playing around with uh, HDR etc things like that are all there again if you want to change on some of the views adding in some of the, um, the kind of the titles etc having them overlaid on the screen you can do from there but again a lot of that is very simple but ultimately I say if you want to explore more about actually how the app works especially onto desktop uh, sorry, onto, onto mobiles and tablets, then please do check out our Edit with Apps course. But hopefully this gives you a little bit more of a clearer understanding as to how to kind of navigate the interface, kind of where to find your images, you know, where a lot of the main tools are, especially for when it comes to the editing. The editing itself, is, it's really fun. They say we do a lot of tutorials um, on iPhotography using Lightroom. So anything that we do do in Lightroom Classic, well, at least I would say kind of maybe 80% of the things that we do, maybe a bit more than that on Lightroom Classic, you'll be able to do on mobile. Sometimes it's better to have that kind of larger screen so you can kind of finesse your shot a little bit better. But I would say you can have a large percentage of the tutorials that we do on Classic. You'll be easily transferred into doing it with uh, Lightroom CC if you have the normal uh, Adobe subscription. But otherwise, if you've got any questions, please get in touch. Hopefully that's helpful.